Hi everyone, just wanted to give some of my thoughts on contained freshwater ecosystem type builds or sealed aquarium type builds uh, as well as the Wallstad method for aquarium keeping. So uh, the Wallstad method based basically off maximizing natural filtration methods to create an ultra minimalist type tank. Um, so recommending miracle Grow, plant soil as the substrate, uh, thin gravel layer, ex like a ton of live plants in the aquarium and then essentially requiring minimal filtration needs and very little extra to keep the tank up. So I like this idea, started wanted to do a contained ecosystem with like no filtration which actually started as this tank here which is natural pond mud collected outside uh, and this used to be filled with plants but what ended up happening was it got super algae encrusted, you can see, because it's a, a plastic tank, and I sort of fell behind on the upkeep, so I gave up on this, but now this is full of rich, densely populated substrate. You can sort of see some of the striations in the substrate a little bit of the different bacterial layers, and so this tank was nitrite, ammonia, you know, toxin-free ever since I had it great substrate then this one was similar um, pond substrate all natural filtration just an air stone for uh, water agitation to keep the plants oxygenated and this tank did great same thing undetectable toxin levels uh, it's still running strong so I just leave this one up and then finally I transitioned to this guy which is it's just a 10 gallon, but I wanted to size up a little bit. Uh, this also uses the same principles, but I made it slightly more high tech relative to what it was. It's still pretty low tech. Um, I did use the uh, Fluval, is it Fluval? Um, as the substrate, and then some rocks collected from local ponds and streams. Uh, this tank is supposed to be essentially all invertebrates, so I have a couple fish, but I wanted to do mostly all invertebrates to keep the sort of toxin production levels maybe a little bit lower, also not to have to worry about feeding as much, um, and just create sort of an easier to maintain low upkeep system. The substrate is colonized with some of the soil from these tanks, so fully cycled colonized soil and it start to starting to take off on its own also threw in as many plants as I could fit so we've got a big pile of java moss in the middle there then we've got some type of bamboo plant I got in the back this all, all this stuff in the middle is wild harvested watercress which you came in as tiny little shrubs I just threw in on top of the tank and have since exploded um, yeah, so you can see. And they're doing a great job with the nitrite levels. Um, we've got a bit of hornwort floating up there, a lot of duckweed, unfortunately, water lily. In the back there, we've got some kind of melon sword from Petco. Um, and then an Anubius that I haven't planted yet, and it's from a different tank, so it's not in great shape. But, um, Driftwood was harvested at a local pond, the log in the middle, local pond, which have lots of great bacteria on them and the shrimp love to pick at it. Um, high tech wise, I do have two filters to keep it at about 75. I do have a couple marine pure balls, I don't know if they're actually doing anything or not. And just the other day, I added a sponge filter. Um, so this tank, I'm going for the Wallstead method, but my substrate's not ideal because I don't have enough soil and my plants aren't ideal because they're not you know I haven't filled up the tank yet with them um, and some of them are growing as well no co2 injection so I'm not doing the best wall said method so I did decide to add a sponge filter which has uh, great biological and mechanical filtration properties and overall still pretty low maintenance so I thought that'd be okay um, so this tank's been running great for about six months now. Um, nitrite levels have been 
excellent, except I added a couple Tiger barbs and they kind of spiked. Um, but otherwise, I almost never have problems with this tank. Water changes maybe once every three, two or three weeks. And every, no, I haven't had any die-offs yet somehow. Um, in terms of inhabitants, mostly invertebrates. So I've got on the left mystery snail, the middle two nearite snails you could see. Another mystery snail. We've got five or six ram's horn in here, which I'm hoping to try to get them to breed. There's a whole mess of cherry shrimp. Um, I picked up 25 of them off eBay that were labeled as like, um, because they weren't brightly colored, they were a little bit cheaper. So I got them for super cheap and they've been doing great in here. Haven't reproduced yet though. I did add two tiger barbs, um, just to see how they would do and the system was doing so well otherwise. Um, got a crayfish in here, which actually I've had absolutely no problems with, nipping at anything, attacking the fish. Um, they're actually pretty slow and pretty goofy, so they actually don't harass anyone that much, and I keep them pretty well fed. They've been molting a lot and doing pretty well. Um, somewhere in here we've got two autosynchless dwarf catfish. I've got a lot of bladder snails that I also harvested from local ponds. These are the babies, but there's big ones floating around everywhere. Um, so I feed this tank once a night, basically. Um, I'm using a bug insect based pellets. I've got uh, sinking wafers, got the Hikari wafers, and then I also feed um, this frozen thawed frozen shrimp, that white stuff there. The shrimp love that. So if you were thinking about setting up sort of a minimalist tank, um, I think these would all be good ways to go. Just make sure to capitalize on